In three. three. <laughs> Two? No, we do that. I know. In three. No, we do that together. I've never done that All with right. you. I clap to piss you off. In three. Two. Hey, Stuart. Hey, Alicia. We're the, the Sketch, Sketch Comedy, Comedy Podcast, Podcast Show. Actually, we're not. This is the Curmudgeon Cafe Podcast. And welcome. My name is Benjamin Lewis. And today we have a really exciting episode because I'm interviewing two other podcasters. Yes, two. This is my first attempt at doing a two-person interview. As a matter of fact, I had them interview each other. In April of 2014, Stuart Rice and Alicia Holland released their very own podcast, The Sketch Comedy Podcast Show. I'll definitely put a link to that show in the show notes. If you find them funny during this interview, I recommend you give them a listen. Before the interview started, I had them play a little game of uh, rock, paper, scissors to decide who would go first. And Stuart Rice lost. So here's the beginning of the interview with Stuart Rice, interviewed by Alicia Holland. My name's Stuart Rice. I was born in San Jose, California, back, way back in 1975. I had a good childhood. It was a, you know, I guess you'd define it as sort of like that normal childhood. I, it ended up, uh, I grew up much like a only child would. Um, because my s youngest sibling is 16 years older than I am. I grew up in a, in a household that was very loving. Uh, my parents were considerably older than a lot of other people's parents. So um, I was a late, like a surprise, or as my dad would say, like a, oh. <laughs> accident is another It was an accident, <laughs> yes. Uh, he was prepared to retire, and I was, I put a wrench in them the plans there. But overall, it was a really good childhood. Um, I was, uh, school was always kind of tough because I ended up falling under that uh, nerdy category. Before I know, they were cool? Before they were cool. This was kids, this is back when being thrown in the garbage can or being locked up in your locker, like, it was a thing. So um, that was happening. Uh, so that wasn't so pleasant. And I grew up in a town <clears throat> uh, called Woodland, California, which I try never to admit that I've come from there because it's not a place I like to even think about going back. It was, uh, it was a farming community. And uh, surprisingly, I didn't fit in with the whole farming community. But you're so rugged. <laughs> yeah, uh, not so much. So uh, it didn't work out so great as far as that goes, I was never really good at sports. I was never really good at, uh, you know, cow tipping or whatever else they did. So um, I, I didn't fit in real well. And then uh, uh, after my junior year, I got an opportunity to move to Santa Cruz, California, which uh, turned out to be a good, good place to move to. So um, everything that I could say bad about Woodland, I can do the exact opposite with Santa Cruz because it was, it's a lot more exciting and um, you know, a little bit uh, more perverse of an af atmosphere, so it kind of opened my mind a little bit. How bad? What's? Can you nutshell an instance in which it was not pleasant? I, uh, I, I was on the school newspaper because all the cool kids were on the school newspaper, right? Right? Anyway, I was on the school newspaper, and uh, my job at this point was I was given the assignment to interview the, um, the vice principal for, uh, uh, for something. It was for some article that I had to write. So I was riding the bus at the time because, again, cool kid. Clearly. So I, was, I, had, um, I had to catch the bus, but I, had to, I remembered I had to make this appointment, so I... I was running to the uh, to the office to get that taken care of, but I had a really bad head cold at the time, and so I, as I was running to the office, I was like, oh, I gotta clear my head a little bit. So I jumped into the bathroom, took care of some business, right, and then for the viewers at home that maybe I are blew my nose. Impaired. Yes, oh, I blew my nose. You cleared up. Okay. Yes, so I cleared out the sinuses, and I jump into the office, and I go to the secretary, and I'm like, Hey, I've got. I need to make an interview appointment with whoever the vice principal's name, whatever his name was. Real impressionable, obviously. I can't, <laughs> I can't remember his name. But uh, the, uh, the secretary is looking at me like, 
I'm, I'm sorry. And I was like, I, I have to make an appointment with the vice principal. I have to do an interview for the school newspaper. And she's looking at me like, what, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, I feel really uncomfortable right now. But I, I, I was like, can I, can I just make the appointment? And she's like, yeah, we can make the appointment. And she writes it down. And she goes, OK, um, bye. And I'm like, I, I, this is weird. Like, I'm used to like the other students, you know, barely noticing me or looking at me with disdain. This is actually surprising. This is an adult. Usually, I have a good relationship with adults because all nerds do. Mm. And uh, I was, I walk out of the office, and I'm like, man, that was really odd. And as I'm walking out, <clears throat> back out to the bus stop, or where the bus picks us up, you know, I'm seeing people and I'm saying hi, and they're looking at me weird, and I'm like, I don't really understand what's going on. And I get back to the, to the bus where we're going to get picked up and my friend looks at me and goes, what the hell's wrong with your face? And I was like, what? He says, what's that on your chin? Evidently when I had blown my nose, all of it had rested on my chin and so I had this lump of, that was a good story for oh, me. Of, of just mucusy, boogery, Yes, mucusy, slimy. boogery. Yeah, that's disgusting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right here. And when I did the wipe, I thought maybe it would just be like a little bit or one. It was like handful. It was a two. It was a two wiper. It was, oh, it was, a, it was a wiper that's and a half at horrific. least. Horrific. Yeah. So that's one story about me kind of being a not a pleasant story of youth. Uh, Oh, shoot, I lost the other one. I'll have to think about that. Maybe we can come back to that if it's interesting. <laughs> um, before we hop into the next, do you want more interaction or you want him to just like roll with it or? I, I'm liking what we're getting. So okay, so perfect. We can keep going um, so from Santa Cruz, how do you end up? now in Portland for multiple years. Oh my goodness, there is such a path here. So, uh, so this is actually my second time in Portland. Um, I uh, moved up here because I got a job with a company called Fry's Electronics. And uh, they had opened a store up here. And so they had asked me to come up here and open the store for them, so I did. And then they asked me, they invited me to come stay up here. And I remember my, uh, my boss was, had called me and he said, hey, do you want to move up to Oregon? Because at the time I was living in San Jose. And he said, do you want to move up to Oregon? I was like, oh yeah, I love it up there. Because the week I had come up here to do the whole thing with the store and all of that, I happened to have met a girl. And then it also happened to be during the Rose Festival. Mm. And then it also happened to be the most gorgeous weather Portland has ever seen. So, of course, you were sold. I'm sold. I'm like, yeah, I want to move to Oregon. Are you kidding me? And so he says, do you want to move to Oregon? I was like, yeah. And he goes, well, I feel like I should tell you um, it rains there. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, no, it rains a lot. I have always been really into comedy. I've always been uh, fascinated with it and kind of a comedy nerd along with all of my other nerdisms. Comedy nerd was also one of them. And so uh, I, I've always followed it. I always wanted to be a stand-up comedian, but I just didn't have, I didn't think I had the chutzpah for it. Is that the correct word? Chutzpah. Chutzpah? Yeah, a little Thank bit you. more in the throat. You know all how right. I feel about the juice, I love it. Yes. So anyway, we, uh, we all of my personalities, we, <laughs> I, uh, I never really pursued it. And then one day I had a dealer call me and one of my dealers called me and she was like, hey, we, we're gonna have a, a dinner for all the employees, like a, a, an awards dinner and we'd like you to uh, do some stand-up comedy. And I was like, oh, um, I'm not a stand-up comic. Like, I'm not a comedian. And she's like, yeah, but we think you're funny, so. Uh, you can stay um, at the resort for free if you come and do this. And I was like, it's a nice resort. Absolutely, I'll come do that. So I, I, I said yes, and then like two days later, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I should probably find out exactly um, how much I, comedy she wants me to do. So I call, 
and she says, I, I ask her like, how much are you thinking? And I'm thinking like five to 10 minutes. It's because five minutes I can definitely do. I can do five, solid five. 10 minutes is like, that's stretching it, right? Like that's a lot of comedy. You gotta be funny for a long time for 10 minutes. Oh, we were thinking like 45 minutes. That's like an HBO special. I don't know if you know. You're basically Chris Rock, so it's fine. Y yeah, I, suddenly I'm Chris Rock, right? Because I got that kind of charisma. <laughs> anyway, so I'm like, ah, okay. Because I'm willing to take the challenge. So I have three weeks to come up with 45 minutes of comedy. Two weeks, five days later, because I didn't do anything with it for two weeks and five days, I wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat going, oh my God, I've got 45 minutes of comedy to write. So I sit up and I grab my iPad and I just start typing. I'm like, I'm not even thinking, I'm just typing. And I came up with 30 jokes in between the times of 2 a.m and 6 a.m., just 30 jokes, right? Just doing all that. And I ended up coming up with 45 minutes of mediocre comedy. But I did it, and that was kind of cool. So that was kind of my, the origins of everything was like, hey, I got up, I actually got laughs, and I did it, so like, obviously I'm not the worst person in the world at this, because I've been to comedy shows where nobody laughed. And these were people that, yeah, they know me, but it's not like <clears throat> they, they don't know me that well. And, but they were, there were some genuine laughs out there, like uncontrollable. Nobody can, no liquids coming out of the nose, but still. That's a little laughs. much to ask for on the first yeah, go. Lost, uh, lot to ask for. So um, from there, it was like I, need, I had this comedy thing I wanted to get this outlet of. So I actually tried a short lived, uh, my idea was to have a podcast that kind of gave a synopsis of all of the comedy in Portland, and it was called pdxhawcast.com. And that was a terrible failure because I, I didn't know what I was doing, and the podcasting, the episodes were terrible. And uh, so I've deleted all of those. That doesn't exist anymore. And um, I did have a little bit of an outlet because I had some friends that did a podcast, so I'd go on and do their podcast. But then... Um, I was just looking for something and then all of a sudden this person popped up in my life and I was like, hey, we riff pretty good together, let's do that. So. As usual, I'll ask my guest for a recommendation for an audiobook for the Audible ad. It took a couple days for Stuart to get back to me, but when he did, he certainly came through. This book looks really good. At least I'm really interested in it. The book is called Off to Be the Wizard by Scott Meyer. And I think the description wraps it up quite nicely. It's a simple story. Boy finds proof that reality is a computer program. Boy uses program to manipulate time and space. Boy gets in trouble. Boy flees back to medieval England to live as a wizard while he tries to think of a way to fix things. Boy gets in more trouble. Once I've cleared out my backlog of audiobooks, this is the first one I'm going to listen to. And if you visit audibletrial.com slash curmudgeon and sign up for a free trial today, you can download this audiobook for free or one of the 150,000 other titles that Audible has available. Again, that website is audibletrial.com slash curmudgeon. Sign up for your free trial today. Now it's Alicia Holland's turn in the hot seat. She's being interviewed by Stuart Rice. Hey, Alicia. Hey, Stuart. Tell us a little something about how you grew up. Um, I grew up in Troutdale, Oregon, which is about 20 minutes outside of the city of Portland. So I like to say I'm a Portlander or a unicorn, born and raised. Um, grew up with my parents, um, still married after 38 years. Um, my brother is nine years younger than I am, but we like to say that we're opposite because he very much lives the 31-year-old life of married and has his house and job and life together. And I ended up back at home. So uh, yeah, my parents are amazing and my brother is awesome and just typical suburban town. So yeah, grew up there, went to school for a bit, hated it. 
and then uh, ended up going down to Las Vegas for a handful of years to live with my grandpa after my grandma had passed away and did real estate there and it was horrifically awful and uh, I had a boss that was very similar to Devil Wears Prada and I came home and my therapist actually told me I had PTSD from working with her because it was abusive so <laughs> that was fun. Um, so came back home, had no idea what to do with myself or my life. I just had to get out of Vegas. And uh, my mom said, oh, we always need substitutes in the school district. So you love kids, so just join. Like, all right, I'll, I'll do the sub thing until I figure out what I really want. And seven years later, I'm still working in education because it turns out I really like it. All right. Well, you know, I, I, you know, I know you very well. Right. But... Um... You have some very distinct uh, things you like to do, like extracurricular, outside of work and school. Um, tell us about like some of the things that you like to do outside of. Like, I feel like you have something specific in mind, and I can't read what it is. No, nothing specific. Like, just tell us a little something about like things you like. Um, I like to be goofy with my friends. I love. I karaoke way too much. I'm one of those people in my thirties that. Um, you know, just love going out with the girls and karaoke, but like I really do, so it's kind of sad, but it's also my favorite thing. I think deep down, somehow performing in that matter would be my favorite thing. Um, I don't drink at all, which tends to hurt people's brains um, a lot to the point that they don't want to be in my company anymore sometimes. <laughs> um, uh, for no reason other than, have you ever seen a drunk person? Because, wow. <laughs> well, to be fair, before I met you, I didn't drink, so. Right, I have that effect as well. <laughs> it's like, you know, if I have to hang out with you as a non-drinker, I'm going to be drunk the whole time. Mm. Like, that's fair. Uh, yeah, so just, I love going out and I love partying with my friends on the weekend. I think uh, part of my, you know, this all, is going around the idea of the podcast. And I think uh, because my life tends to be a little bit of a Lucy episode at times, I found that humor gets you through dealing with weird moments. Um, one instance was when I was living in Vegas. And when you live in Vegas, every, you have visitors all the time, even when you don't want to, because you have a house and they can come stay with you and it's so much cheaper. Um, but I loved it because all my girlfriends would come down. And so we go and we have a night out. And part of my sobriety is uh, feeling an obligation to care for all the other not-so-sober people. And, you know, so it's Vegas. We close down the town. It's 2, 3 in the morning. And everyone's like, I got I get a hot dog. And so it's like, all right, let's find the hot dog cart. We'll take you over here. Get them all up to the hotel room. And then there's the one friend who just, she's not ready to stop and we found out later that there was a coke problem so that explained it a coke um, or a coke a coke oh i see what would a coke problem be <laughs> that's why i was so confused <laughs> <laughs> so so uh she, she's still uh, raring to go i'm like all right well i can't just send you intoxicated person out into the world of Vegas at four in the morning, so I will go with you because there are still things open and still parties to be had, so okay. So we end up at Tropicana, or no, we were staying there, I don't remember, New York or something. We end up in this club, and if you've ever done Vegas, and probably not as a sober person, you don't realize, like, you know, when you close down a bar in Portland at two in the morning, it's not pretty when those lights come on. You know, it's the stragglers. It's the people like, who, is there anyone I can take home, please? Like, oh, and everyone's sloppy drunk and it's just a mess. Take that, put it in Vegas, put it two hours later, really not pretty. So we're in this bar and uh, we're dancing and, you know, I'm, I've never been one because, you know, never had anyone ask me out, never had you know, these things. So I'm just the weird, goofy girl, and I'm there to be the funny friend, and that's fine. So, you know, there's this group of Canadian guys like, hey, we're partying in Vegas, and I'm like, awesome. And I'm doing ridiculous dances. I'm sure there were a lot of thumbs and lip biting involved. 
And I did this really bitchin' move where I have my arm go dead and I pop it around to hit my head because that's sexy. And then I drop it like it's hot because it is and then bring it back up and like, hey, there's that mating dance, you know. And uh, so I do it and then like laughing about it and I, and I realize I'm feeling a breeze that I was not feeling prior to the dropping. I'm like, huh, that's interesting. And I reach back and I feel that from my knee to the top of my butt, my pants no longer are connected at all. We're talking like a foot at least of torn pant because it was too hot. It was too hot to be dropped. So, so I reached around and luckily again, because I'm such a sex kitten, was wearing boy shorts, which I'm like, that's, thank God, that's why I don't wear thongs because things like this happen. And so I go to the friend, I'm like, listen, we gotta go back to the room. I split my pants. Like it's four in the morning. My ass is hanging out. I'm done. I want to go home. No, 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 no. We got to keep on. I'll buy you a drink at our hotel if you'll just, let's just go. So finally I get her out of the bar and we proceed to tro- cross over Tropicana and the Las Vegas Strip, which besides Times Square is the most busy populated intersection in the world. And I'm holding my pants closed as I'm going across the bridge and we get in and she sits down at a machine and puts money in (laughs) as I beg her or one more hotel like please let's just go and and I had to sit with her for like 15 bucks worth of slot playing because I knew she would never find our hotel room and I just sat in the gross Vegas slot machine chair with my butt hanging out waiting for her to finish playing before I could get her back to the hotel. How many STDs do you think you got? From I know that for seat? a fact it was 43. Okay. <laughs> Not the first or last time that I split my pants dancing. There were multiple other occasions that I have been out in public splitting my pants. Now, what day is it? Right. <laughs> um, and another, um, I'm actually, I've realized in talking to people about my dating history, because I'm always open to meeting new people and dating and adventures, um, that uh, my history is not the average bear's. And uh, so I'm like, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to write a book about the guys I've dated, you know, been in something resembling real relationships and what I've learned from that. And... um, One of my favorite stories that I've written so far is my first kiss because it's, I think that's the epitome of someone's awkwardness in life is like, even if you're the cool guy, the first kiss is still going to be weird. Usually they're like, I don't know, what's, how old were you? You were young. Yeah, I was young. How do you practice that though? Really? You think about how do you practice kissing? Well, yeah, you don't. So you You don't. So it's just always Well, people have posters and hands and I don't know. That doesn't... I, I don't know. So I'm uh, my awkward self through my life and, uh, you know, wearing thrift store clothes all the time and grandpa pants in high school. And a my hipster awkward... before hipster was cool. I, yeah, I was the pre-hipster, obviously. And, um, you know, just pretty clueless about all of it and not really concerned, but also like, why does no one like me? It's like, well, your awkward phase lasted for like eight years, so that's why. Um... So fast forward to being 19 years of age and still no kiss, no virgin, no nothing, like nothing has happened. I've danced with a boy once who ditched me at said dance. So uh, we're at a party, a college group of people, theater kids. I was always the theater groupie because I'm not full on theater. I'm obnoxious and I'll sing randomly, but not full on theater person. And, uh, like they're lepers. What, well, you know what how you they are. Like, like, I have maybe more social skills than like theater. Yeah, that face. Mm-hmm. So, uh, anyway, so we're at this party, and it's a bunch of theater people, and uh, it's getting late, and we're laughing because this is the time of, you know, to loop into your story, Girls Gone Wild commercials were on. That's when you knew it was past midnight because they were showing the Girls Gone Wild commercials. 
So we just played the infomercial on loop and everyone's having a good old time. And I met this boy and he was a couple years older and, you know, just got his degree in special education and lived in Portland. And I was instantly in love and just like, this is it. This is my soulmate and it is beautiful and it is perfect. And the night goes on and everyone's partying and drinking, dancing. It's a great time. And he and I are just talking hours, just sitting, talking, talking. And uh, then it's getting late and I'm me. So I'm like, oh, it's late. I'm tired. So I want to go to sleep because I'm tired <laughs> and awesome. Because it's probably like 2 in the morning at this point. So we look over and there's a futon in the living room because it's college people. So it's really great furniture. And... Uh, like, yes, awesome. To me, yeah, futon, I can take a nap before I have to drive all the drunk people home. Him, I'm sure in his mind, thought, who cares if it's in the living room? There's a bed right there, you know? So we go over and, uh, and we lay on the futon, and I am like a light switch. If I'm not going, 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 done. I'm out. So I lay down. I'm like, oh, this feels so great. Blanket over the head out and I wake up to him on my face I don't know how long he's been there I don't know what's ha I wake up and I'm just like something's happening wait oh my god there's a person on the other side of my face oh my god oh my god it's my first kiss oh my god I was asleep I don't know how long he's been kissing me I have no recollection of my actual first kiss I woke up to a slimy drunk man making out with my mouth and it was awesome that's amazing that's an amazing story <laughs> now because I was interviewing two people I did generate a lot of content I wasn't able to use in this episode and a lot of it's really good a lot of it's funny and I want to make that available so if you visit patreon.com slash curmudgeon cafe and sign up at the $5 level, that's a $5 subscription for every episode I release, you will gain access to the raw audio files and special behind the scenes features and content that most people don't normally get to see. You'll have access to the raw, unedited MP3 files of the interviews, as well as the videos. This particular one, I'm actually going to break it out so that you get all three of the different sections of the interview, one with Stuart, one with Alicia, and the one with both, all unedited in their raw form. There's quite a few interesting stories. I hope you'll take the time to sign up at patreon.com slash curmudgeoncafe and help support the show. And now for the conclusion of this episode, I sit down and interview both Alicia and Stuart at the same time as they describe how they met and the process they went through in creating the sketch comedy podcast show. Uh, so like a year and a half ago, yep, we were both in sad, sad places. Yes. I was recently separated on my way to a divorce, mm -hmm. and you were... Well, I was being fabulous and just dating up a storm that oh, summer. Oh, that's true. That you was were... my fabulous dating summer. But we were both online doing dating, not to put, you know... There's you... nothing wrong with online dating. I... You know, I've, I think it's a different experience for boys than it is girls. Yeah, I mean, I never got harassed or messaged or anything. Which you're bummed about. Yeah. Um. So girls, we were both on OK Cupid, the plenty of fish of the internet, and um, I don't know who wrote who. Did you write me? I wrote you, and it was because you had a picture. I don't think I've ever told you this. Uh, your profile was fun, but it, you had a picture of you. It was obviously you doing karaoke, and you're just like screaming into the microphone, and it's blurry, and it just had this rock star like appeal to it. And so I was like, man, that she seems like a cool chick, so I will send her a message. And <laughs> That's uh, hilarious. And then like a week later, you sent me a message back, and Not it that was you've kept track or no. heard about that. No, and then it was uh, it was a matter of trying to find a way to um, to meet up, which I was you know I was hoping sooner rather than the many many weeks later. Well, it was hard because you had the kids. 
Uh, the yeah, I had the kids, funky. and then you were like, oh, but someone else has a boat, so I'd much rather go spend time with them. Oh, yeah, you did. You asked me to um, the Shakespeare thing, which I was totally yes. into. And then um, I was going to go to that, yeah. but I was in a boat that literally started sinking. Right, and you lost your phone. And my phone was in a Ziploc bag, yeah. but that doesn't work unless you close the Ziploc bag. That's like... So I didn't have a phone to be able to contact. At a certain point... I um, I was dating other people, and I have a really phenomenal dating story that I will not go into here. But uh, the date went, and it was not going so great. And I decided out of nowhere I was going to send a text message at 12.30? Yeah, to Alicia. And I was just like, hey, you're doing that superhero crawl, and I'm done with my thing I just did, so what are you up to? And you replied back, I'm at the corner of something and something else. Gleason and My 45th and Gleason. 45th and Gleason. And I think I, I was... I pulled over and yeah. had text and drive. Yeah, me too. Uh, so anyway, I texted back, um, oh, I'm on like 45th and something else. Well, we were close, and so we Within decided... Within a few blocks. Yeah, we decided to meet up that night. Before you get to that, yeah. my side of that is all day, hey, I'm doing the superhero pub crawl. You dress up in costume mm -hmm. and you nerd out, which I knew you were because we had been texting and emailing, so we did know about each other. Um, and I was like, just come down to this. It's great. And you're like, oh, I've got the kids and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then at that, the reason I was new of that thing was this guy that I was Dating is a strong word. I don't know what I was feeling lonely with. That is a uh, that is um, a lo look of distaste. You had yeah, a distasteful look. Yeah. Um, anyway, I was making poor decisions with him. And then, uh, you know, I had written you. And I actually, that day was the day that um, George Zimmerman was found not guilty. <laughs> and I remember that because I went out to my dad and I was almost in tears because I couldn't believe it. And then my mom said something, and her and I got in, like, the worst fight we might have ever been in. And so I just left and went to the second part of this pub crawl and uh, to meet up with people. So I was in this really gross place and um, uh, ended up, like, deciding, that's it. I'm just so blah. I'm going to go home with this guy that I had already... Ugh. Anyway, so I go up to him and I, I'm kind of chasing him through the bar and I didn't even like him enough to be dealing with that. And I was so annoyed by it. And so I went up and like, hey, can I just, I'll just sleep on your couch. I don't even care if anything happens. I just don't want to go home tonight. Um, you know, can I come over? And he kind of gave me this reaction. And I'm like, okay, as an American female to an American male, like that's a that's a go. That's yeah, a green yeah, light. I mean, that's you a don't green, you yeah. don't meh that. I don't I don't know many men that would just go. Meh. Right. So he was just such a tease, but he was such a bitch. Like I called him. <laughs> I, I I I'm not gonna say his actual name because I called him blank Ted, as in Ted from How I Met Your Mother, right, because right. he is that guy. The most he's that guy. Womanly man. Just ugh. Probably on his period Thank right now. Thank you. <sighs> More than, yeah, okay. I know. Thank you. And uh, I was just so pissed at him that I was like, I'm out, and stormed off. And then uh, I only ended up where I was because they did not put anything on the freeway that the freeway was being closed because they were repaving the 84. Right. So I couldn't actually get home, and I ended up kind of lost, if you can believe it. Um, and Just real quick, I have a feeling that someone that's listening to this is going to be able to pinpoint exactly the time and then we'll get back to us and say, it wasn't a year and a half. It was like a year and three quarters because Probably. 84 was closed at this time. And uh, Thank you, Internet. Yeah, I ended up on that street and got your message. And I was like, I'm in the Ninja Turtles. You're Turtle in Ninja outfit, Turtles. And, and I'm you. freshly off of this other date that, and when I say freshly off, I mean the date has ended. And, okay, so... I'm driving home <clears throat> and um, do that, meet up, uh, and we 
I, I think I had to look up something on Yelp in order to get, it was either Yelp or one of the other ones where it's, you know, what's open right now. And we end up at this bar and I don't even remember where it's at, what it it's called. It was way off the beaten path. It was way off the beaten path, but we get in there. But you were there, you had made a mask. Oh, I did. I had made a mask. Just in case you ended up at the pub at crawl. This, and so the there you crawl. are. And I'm like, oh, this weirdo's wearing a mask. Yeah. Which is, I'm a jerk. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but that story just, just sets that. Yeah. yeah. You're kind of a, yeah. Anyway. So, uh, I show up with a mask and I, I feel really awkward because I'm still like, I'm inside, I'm still that very awkward 14 year old nerd kid. So like anytime there's a girl, I'm like, but gosh, you paying attention to me? <laughs> so we meet up and um, we end up going into this, to this bar and we have to go downstairs. I remember we had to walk downstairs and we get down there and the place is practically empty, right? And um, you decide to get some tater tots. Probably. I, you did. I, I don't remember things, I remember but I don't doubt that at all. And we decided to sit on the same side. I think I asked, can I sit with you? And so we sat next to each we other. We shared a booth, which was really gross, but totally cool at the same time. Yeah, totally understand that. And we got the tater tots, and we're talking and eating the tater tots. And then out of nowhere, I mean out of nowhere this most the most rastafarian reggae starts playing right it's but not just playing it's it's not just playing it is like penetrating my soul Be and the quality was like they had downloaded it from <laughs> napster back in 1997 they downloaded it from napster and then they burned a cd of that they burned a cd put the cd in their laptop yeah downloaded it there, made a copy of that onto another CD, played it, it in a the, CD no, it player. Took, it took that sound, took it out to a tape deck. Yes. Then to a phonograph machine. Yes. To a reel-to-reel. -reel. And then held it, held a phone to a speaker that was playing it, and then the phone was connected to the speakers. Yes. The it was <laughs> headache-inducing, very loud for the lack of quality. It was very loud. And I don't know about you, um, Alicia, but... For me, reggae is about the most uh, fingernails on a chalkboard music. Oh, no, I disagree. Oh. I have to be in the right mood for it. You know how music and weather is for me. Yeah. Like, I sat my last day when I went to Belize, my last day there, last couple hours, I just put on the headphones, put on some Rasta, and just chilled with my feet hanging off the dock do, watching do, the sun. Do, do, yeah, it do, was perfect. Do, 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 do. That bar at that time and that quality, not so much. No, it was but terrible. But there was that guy... The hype man. Yes. So they're playing this they're music pl on this device. It's amazing. Blaring. We're, mm -hmm. We had to sit by each other so we could so we hear could actually each other. Talk. Yeah. And uh, this guy has a microphone mm -hmm. and is just getting the people going, getting the crowd. All, all five of the white people that are in this bar. And they're feeling it. They must have been. They were just not showing that they were feeling it. A lot of people standing around. Yeah, it was awkward, it was and awkward. but perfect because like we just sat and we could people watch. So. Uh, but no, it was great actually. As far as first dates go, that it's, was probably like one of the best first yeah. dates because we just sat and talked and got to know each other. Like, just talked about everything. Right. Just talked about for everything. hours. Yeah. And so things were going really well. Like you know, things were going really. And then we went to right? you invited me over to your house mm -hmm. to watch a movie, and yep. I was like, okay, we did. And we sat and made fun of it the whole time. Yep. And it was perfect. It was fantastic. What was the movie? Dark Skies. Dark because Skies. Because I had been on a date with a gentleman who asked me if I had seen it. I said no. He said, oh, it's great. There are a lot of plot twists. And he proceeded to tell me all of the plot twists. Uh, so that was great. And then, uh, and so I, I told him about that date. And he said, well, then in that case, we have to watch it now. Yeah. So we did. And we... Can't remember the movie at all. But we no. had some funny stuff that we said. Yeah. So we made fun of it. We're like, oh, that was, wow, that was really fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we walked, you walked me outside, and I kissed you, because mm -hmm. you stood there. And then I kissed you, and, <laughs> Girl? You, and you still just stood there. Yeah. Um, and that should have been the first. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that I, I felt like I had to like, slap your face a yeah, little bit, because yeah. I, I wasn't sure if you were alive. Yeah, yeah. I... Um, that should have been the I've first been, I've been told I've been, I'm aloof. 
That's a word that's been used for me. <laughs> we should have known right then. Yeah. Needless to say. We tried. For nine months. Nine months we tried. We tried to date. We tried to I mean, date. we did we, date. We dated. And we had a lot of great times. Like, we annoyed the hell out of my kids mm -hmm. because we'd sit and watch a movie with the kids. And then and they we were not would, having it. No, because they didn't like the fact that we were talking throughout the movie. But we were over there giggling. And they're looking at us like, shut up during the movie, which I was like, this is some sort of weird role reversal. <laughs> I'm supposed to be telling you guys to pipe down. But that was where our very first sketch came from, mm -hmm. was we were watching a movie. And um, I don't think it was actually Romeo and Juliet, but it was something sappy, teeny, yeah. romantic, blah, crap. It was terrible. And we started with, um, I think I'd said to you, like, could you imagine if this crap was happening nowadays? And... Instantly, we both went into character for about 15 minutes yeah. of Romeo and Juliet, but Juliet's not really into Romeo, and like but she's Romeo's a like teenager, Juliet, and like, yeah. oh, you're a little like too involved, and like maybe you're moving faster than I am, yeah. and I'm just not at the same place. Um, and that was kind of the first that was, that was thing like, that we did. It was after that. Um, again, I was looking for this uh, this outlet for comedy because I I'm too chicken to go out and do stand up, and uh, I, I'm not good on myself by myself. No. So I uh, I was like, hey, um, why don't we get some microphones and just try this? And Alicia said, let's was make like, a podcast. And I said, yeah, oh, what? I don't know what that is. Because until a week ago, I didn't even have a smartphone. Yeah, that's true. So. So. Um, that's uh, that's kind of where that started. And so we got a couple rock band mics and my old broken down Mac and plugged old. everything back in and started recording and came up with some things that we actually thought were pretty funny. So we continued to do it. And I think we'll continue to do it until we're not funny. So a lot of the sketch, the, the sketch ideas do come from this brain over here because she interacts with people or has an idea. I was pointing at yours. I was just making sure. Yeah. Um, so a lot of them do come from there, and it's like these uh, uh, smattering of ideas. Like uh, it'll be like, oh, this happened, and whatever. And like uh, my whiteboard. Yeah, the whiteboard, which I she has a whiteboard that she writes everything down on, but I have not yet been able to figure out exactly what the whiteboard does for us. It is just like colors and words, but nothing makes sense. And I can't figure out anything about it. But that's how her brain works is that she brings that is, hey, what about if uh, monkeys didn't eat bananas, they ate peas? I don't know. That's not a good sketch. That's but a trademark. Don't, do it. don't go stealing that one. <laughs> Obviously, the ideas originate here. She'll bring the ideas and then... Um, my thing is, is I've always been very good. Even on the newspaper, I was a really good editor, so I could always find out like where is the nugget, like where is the where is what's the first paragraph supposed to be, where's the headline. So from that, like I I think we do a good job of figuring out where the funny is in that, and then um, our scripting process is is uh, an arduous long process. Um, our scripting. Our scripting. It's, we spend, a, we spend a lot of time. We do a first draft, we do a second draft, we'll do a final draft, but then we'll have people proofread it. Are you confused about what scripts are? I have no idea. We actually, most of the time what it is, is it's three words on a piece of paper and we just kind of go with it. <clears throat> and uh, uh, this one's really big on one take. Like, really, perfect, done. Like, let's be done. I like to keep the improv, the rawness of it a little bit whereas more. I like to actually try to be funny and uh, do it a couple different times and so we have these like little mini I can, arguments I can't help that I can nail it in one take every time we have That's these fine. like little mini arguments but I think at, over time we, we've uh, we've kind of established like who's kind of the uh, the because uh, I'm not very good at being prepared necessarily mm. but I like to do the like practice runs and those types of things and so We'll get done with one, and she'll be like, that was perfect. And I'm like, ah, let's do it again. And what, what happens is we've found that we, about the third time we do anything, it's, it's pretty locked in. So. And that makes it fun 
the times that we have to do it multiple times is, um, you know, because I love the ones where we get the one take and it's done and it's kind of dirty and quick and dirty, as my principal would say. Funny story about that. Um, uh, I think uh, in doing it the two, three times or five, six, seven times um, is that you can kind of hear spots where, uh, you know, my goal is to break him because I've only broken once, maybe twice. My goal is to, like, get him as often I've as possible. I think I've broken three times. So um, just in keeping it kind of fresh and keeping it that improv because I want that to be part of it is that we are sitting here we have our little sound boards, we don't look at each other, and we just listen and kind of ride that ride together and uh, hearing little spots that you can throw in, little things you didn't catch or wordplay or something from earlier that's an inside joke that works in it and it will catch them off guard, that kind of thing. So I like to keep the freshness there. And I really picture it kind of like a pie because, or a pa, as some people would call it, if you have the, you know, you've got the pie pan and, and I'll throw in the crust and it's like, here's this idea I have, let's start with that. And we both kind of throw in ingredients and then I throw on the top crust. I'm like, good, it's good to go, let's bake it. And he'll come in and like trim the edges and like put the little design flowery on top and make it presentable. Um, Cause he does all, any technological, that no, I'm about to give you a compliment. <laughs> that was a compliment it was and a it involved pie. Um, double, double win. So uh, he spends, so back when we had the crappy old Mac, he spent about eight hours of editing for a 30 minute episode, which is bananas. Or if you're a monkey, it's peas. Um, and so now we have better computer and it doesn't take as much time. Seven and a half Pro hours now. The process itself of waiting for things to load and waiting for all these systems doesn't take as much, but this dude puts in like, I would do nothing. I would be a schmuck sitting there with a the microphone saying dumb things. He goes in and, like, finds the sounds and makes it perfect and edits things. That we might sit there and riff on something for 20 minutes. <laughs> There's a lot of times And he'll cut it now. down to, like, a two-minute thing and have it tight and it's beautiful and perfect. And there are times where I'll come and be like, ah, it's kind of lack. Like, I don't know what's missing. I'm like, oh, what if there's a crowd at an Applebee's on a Thursday and he can find that exact sound and throw it in and it's like, oh, that's it. Now that's that's the sketch and it's perfect. So, yeah. um, I'm always worried, like anytime we, we finish an, uh, recording an episode, I'm always like, oh, this is crap. We've got nothing here. You're worried every time, you're worried as we're recording, yeah. you're worried when we sit down to write, I'm worried you're worried right all now. of that. Yeah, but anytime any, we do it. But I, I do, I sit down and um, I'll listen to it and I'll be like, oh my God, there is nothing here. And then at the end of it, every time I listen to it, because I actually listen to the podcast afterwards in my oh, car right. to make sure that it's everything sounds good. Um, I, it's amazing because I'll be I, I'm sometimes amazed that it's the same thing that we recorded initially, um, and not to give myself too many props, but uh, I think that's kind of the strength is that when we play off of each other, we we do it in such a way we're not even conscious of what we're doing at the time, and, but afterwards I can still go back and listen to it and enjoy it. And before I wrapped up this interview, I asked them both if they had any advice they would like to share. And here's what they had to say. The advice I would give is the same advice that uh, I, I'm taking this straight from uh, Chris Hardwick, which if you're a fan of The Nerdist or Talking Dead or any of that stuff, or At Midnight, uh, he's the, the guy. He, and he wrote or Singled a, Out. Or Singled Out, or what was the ship wrecked? Anyway. He wrote a uh, self-help book, or a self-improvement book, and in the book uh, he talks about how everybody comes up to him and asks him, like, how do you become a comedian? Like, how do you do that? And he said, just do it. And that was my question for the longest time, personally, was, how do I get into this podcasting thing? Like, how do I do it? And the answer was, I just had to do it. Like, I just had to go and do it. And I would say that that's true with pretty much everything is that you have to, whether you want to be a chef or you want to be a uh, homeless beggar, you just need to go out there and do it. And the next thing you know, like that's the thing you're doing. And so uh, the podcasting thing is not my main mode of income because if it was, I would be the homeless beggar guy. But uh, 
it's a it's a it's a start to something and I'm hoping it can continue. And if not, then it's the universe telling me that. But if you wanna if you wanna be something, if you wanna do something, you just have to do it. Or as Sister Act would say, if you wanna be somebody. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. If you wanna go somewhere. I don't watch movies. You better wake up and pay attention. Okay, I might have to pay royalties on that. Oh, sorry. Don't. <laughs> You're going to have to pay royalties on the one we sang. Because definitely. No, I'm just kidding. Um, my advice, because I am definitely one to be giving it, um, I think is to just... Find a, the perfect guy in OkCupid. Okay right. Perfect. Definitely. Sorry. Um, I think just, you know, whiteboard notes. Um, be open to things that um, maybe you're unsure of or have no idea what they're talking about, but give it a try because you have no idea what it could lead to. Um, I think it's important to be honest with yourself. If you're doing something that you hate, I don't care what kind of money, and I've said this about my job for always, that I might not get paid very well at all, and that's okay because I've never been bummed out when my alarm clock goes off. Um, so I think you should feel that way about anything, whether it's a hobby or a job or a partner or a, anything, you know, if it's not something that you feel strongly about. And I think it's important to be honest. We've definitely had um, our times be at busy times of year or our own personal things going on. Even some falling outs. Yeah, definitely, where it's just, um, you know, you kind of have to say, hey, I am not feeling this right now. Let's take some time off and step back from it. It doesn't, I don't, I don't think it has to be, you know, your everything all the time, as long as it's continuing to grow and make you feel happy. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Curmudgeon Cafe podcast featuring Stuart Rice and Alicia Holland from the Sketch Comedy Podcast Show. I hope you'll give their show a listen. I've left a link to it in the show notes of this episode. And if you've enjoyed the show, please let me know by leaving a review on iTunes or Stitcher. And as always, you can leave feedback via Twitter, at Curmudgeon Cafe, or you can find us on Facebook. And I hope you come back next week for another episode of the Curmudgeon Cafe podcast. Are we rolling? Yes. My bad. Great. Hi, I'm Alicia Holland. I'm, I'm oh, no, sorry. I was doing my. Sorry. You can I have a moment? Sorry. Hi, I'm Alicia Holland. I am 31 years old from Portland, Oregon. Hi, I'm Stuart Rice. I'm. You already introduced yourself, you schmuck. 39. What? You already had your introduction. We forgot to do it in the Oh, solo right. Piece. Why don't you do it again? You megalomaniac. Hey, S hey, Stuart. Hey, Alicia. We're the Sketch Comedy Podcast Show. Ha, 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 ha.